provide them guidance and, and, and shepherd them along and make sure that, that they're seeing the larger picture. But at the end of the day, your job is to sort of shield them from a lot of the other goings on or the bureaucracy that, you know, could potentially, you know, bring them down. I need to make decisions based on the facts and, and not what you think I, you know, uh, what you think is going to make me feel good at the end of the day. Some of the best talent that I've ever worked with, they don't have a formal engineering degree. They don't have a, you know, formal certifications or, or whatever. Um, but it's it's that passion that they have for the job. If you don't want to get up out of bed in the morning and go to work, you're probably not going to be the best employee, right? You're not going to be at your best. You're you're not going to be delivering. Um, it, it is definitely a you know it is definitely a challenge. We are here with Stephen Wallace, a Chief Technology Officer for the Defense Information Systems Agency. The company is a combat support agency of the Department of Defense and is composed of more than 7,000 military and civilian employees. Stephen has an extensive experience in the world of tech, especially cybersecurity, and I'm honored to have him on with us today. Stephen, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Lisa. I appreciate it. Could you start by sharing a little bit more about DISA, your role, and the previous experiences that led you there? Sure. So, so this is a is a pretty interesting agency. We provide IT services uh, to the entire Department of Defense, all the way up from the network layer, uh, things like cybersecurity, enterprise services. Uh, we, we run the gamut uh, of IT services uh, for the department. Um, it, it's really an interesting place to work. One of those one of those places that you don't often hear a lot about because we're we're in the background delivering. Um, but uh, it, it's a pretty fascinating place. I've been here for a, a little over eleven years, actually almost twelve years at this point, and and came up through the agency and have gotten to work in a number of different places and and uh, and a number of different capacities in my time here. Um, I've been in this role for about uh, three years, I believe it is now, um, and and my organization or my team, our role within the agency is to um, provide uh, one look research uh, new capabilities that are that are coming down the path. Um, you know, everyone has heard of DARPA, the you know side of the department that's looking at the really far-reaching technologies. We're a little closer to home, uh, a little in that that three to five year sort of range uh, in terms of capability. Uh, so, so we're looking at you know whether that be cyber uh, capabilities or whether that be um, next generation crypto or desktops or uh, you know where we're going uh, from that perspective. And and uh, then in my CTO role. The, uh, that was the emerging tech side of, of of the house, if you will. In the CTO role, I'm, I'm also looking from a technical talent development. Uh, you know, where where do we have? Who are our up and comers? Uh, you know, where do we have weak spots within the agency, you know, from a, a technical perspective and, and trying to sew together uh, the technical approach. And in an agency this large, you, you really have to watch, you know, as groups sort of come up with their own ideas and move in certain directions. How do you how do you sort of bring them back into the fold and take good ideas that exist over here and, and apply them elsewhere or, or help other folks within the agency? Absolutely. Now, the mission of DISA is super unique. When people hear combat support agency, I think it piques that curiosity about what it's really like to work in that type of environment. So talk to us about how you brand your tech department and what have you learned over the past few years of what it takes to create a culture that motivates and really engages top talent? So, so we really do have a unique mission within the Department of Defense, right? Like, um, it's the the department. Our, our role has certainly changed over the years. Um, this has got a fairly unique perspective and a unique place in history that that a lot of folks don't necessarily know. Going all the way back to when we were called the Defense Communication Agency, and 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 I was doing some research a few years ago on something, and and. Um, back when uh, ARPANET was coming about, that ultimately became the internet. Um, there was uh, they started using in these diagrams this cloud, if you will, right? That sort of represented how things were all tied together and stitched together. And and um, 
you know, that was in, in hindsight, sort of the genesis of, of even the term the, the of, you know, the use of cloud, obviously it's evolved way far beyond that. Um, but, but this, gets to operate at a scale and the department gets to operate at a scale that, that is unlike anything else. Um, even, even with the rise of commodity it in, in the rest of the world, um, it, we have a very unique mission set. Uh, the, you know, we're, we're servicing the Department of Defense. We're you know all the way down to the edge to the warfighter. You know where they are, and 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 the you know the fight ha- has you know evolved over the years. And it's not just as much about that kinetic fight that often people think about with uh, the traditional Department of Defense. It's always that also that cyber and and um, you know the the need for data and how we leverage data and and that type of thing going forward. So so we're in a unique position. We we often, um, when, we, when we are interacting with vendors, have the conversations about scale and and complexity, and and the department is very much a federated IT, you know, organization. It's not just you know one uh, IT infrastructure, if you will. It's many that have grown up over many decades of time, and and trying to weave them all together. And that's where DISA sort of comes from underneath, and and tries to you know bring those things together. So. It's it's really been a fascinating place to to be able to to be a part of, um, and and the the even when I talk to a lot of my friends that have left and, and gone out to industry or something like that, at the end of the day they miss the mission. They miss the coming in and actually realizing the stuff that they're doing is making a substantial difference. Um, you know, for the nation, for those, you know, young men and women out there in the field that are, that are, you know, actively engaged and, and, uh, and working to protect the country. So in alignment with that question, because culture and leadership go hand in hand, what is your approach to leadership and talent management? Talk to us about any of the values or philosophies that you hold and what you found that tech talent really responds best to. Sure. So, so people, people enjoy a challenge at the end of the day, right? Nobody, nobody really thrives in, in bureaucracy. Um, I, I learned from a mentor of mine many years ago. Um, and actually, as I was moving into this role uh, within the agency and, and taking on some of these responsibilities, I went back to him and I said, Hey, you know, how were we successful way back when in, in, in that world? And um, his philosophy, and I've tried to adopt it as my own, is, is his philosophy was to let the technical, let the talent do what the talent needs to do and, and provide them guidance and, and, and shepherd them along and make sure that they're that they're seeing the larger picture. But at the end of the day, your job is to sort of shield them from a lot of the other goings on or the bureaucracy that, you know, could potentially, you know, bring them down um, and, and sort of let them fly. And so I, I, we, I try hard to do that, uh, you know, in this role, uh, but also while opening the aperture and, and helping folks to realize what is the broader mission and, and what is our function uh, for the department and, and the little things that you do here, what is the larger impact that it might have down the line, right? If we can improve, say, a, a, a system that's providing contract support or something like that, that allows us to award contracts more quickly, which ultimately allows to get capability out more fast, that sort of thing. Those are the the ability to, to look at, at, at the smaller things, the day to day and realize mm-hmm. the larger impact is, is really important. Um, I'm also frankly, you know, very, uh, very big on one team, one fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't care, uh, the, the rank or the employment type or whatever it is that, you know, if somebody comes up with a good idea, it's a good idea period. And, and let's coalesce and, and, and let's get after it. Um, and, and let's try to prove it out. Um, uh, so um, I've I've often tried to lead from a you know please just call me Steve uh, you know I, I'm not looking for formalities uh, I'm really just looking uh, you know to to help this place move forward and, and do better um, and I, and I think too along the route of formalities uh, there's a time and a place uh, but at the same time uh, I've watched folks sometimes demand formalities you do that folks tend not to speak truth to power right they're they're going to tell you what you want to hear if they fear what your reaction is going to be and and i had the benefit again of learning early on in my career that if i was you know that same mentor that i spoke about earlier uh there was a particular time where i had to come in and, and speak with him about something and um i wasn't necessarily delivering good news uh but i was giving him the news and and what it really was and and um 
he actually stopped me after the fact and he said, you know, I, I really appreciate you not blowing smoke or, or just telling me what you thought I wanted to hear. You know, that's what I need. I need to make decisions based on the facts and and not what you think I, you know, uh, what you think is going to make me feel good at the end of the day. And, and that's a really important thing to me is, is, you know, up and down the stack, whether it's my leadership or the, whether it's the folks that I get to work with, um, uh, is, is that truth to power and, and just being open no matter what the news, good, bad, or, or indifferent. Now, during the Great Resignation, the conversation of people seeking purpose and really wanting to see impact in their work escalated. So when I'm chatting with candidates, the first thing they say is they want to be in a place where they're challenged, where they're excited about the problems that they're solving. How much of a role do you believe having passion for your work plays in tech retention? And what are some of the problems that DISA is solving that you think excites tech talent? So, so it's, it plays a, an enormous role. It's, it's everything, right? If, if you don't want to get up out of bed in the morning and go to work, you're probably not going to be the best employee, right? You're not going to be at your best. You're, you're not going to be delivering. Um, it, it is definitely a, you know, it is definitely a challenge. Uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat and say that the, you know, the government is, is bureaucracy free, right? But, you know, we have our share of that. But at the end of the day, the larger portion is that mission. Uh, the department has an enormous mission for, you know, for the country as a whole there, you know, it, all you have to do is turn on the news and, and see what's going on over in Europe right now. Uh, and, 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 you know, even, even prior to that, um, and over the years and, and what's possibly to come in the future, um, that's one of the coolest things. And what's, what's frankly kept myself and, and many of my colleagues here is that, uh, is that desire to, um, you know, to deliver for that mission. It's more important, you know, many times than pay, it's more important than, than, you know, that fulfillment that you ultimately get, um, when you see, uh, one of your capabilities in play. I, I, I'll tell you as a, uh, as an aside, I, um, years ago when I first got to DIS, I got to work on a, a project that we called enterprise email. And I remember standing in BWI airport, I was flying somewhere, uh, and I saw a few, uh, soldiers standing off to the side and, they were on their blackberries and, and they were doing their, you know, doing their thing for their blackberry. And I sat there and I thought, wow, that's, you know, I, I helped to, you know, deliver that capability and put that capability in their hands. And, and they shouldn't have to think about, you know, whether their email services, you know, up, down or whatever, the fact that they're able to work and get their jobs done is, is frankly why we're here. So I think that, you know, um, that helps, uh, many of my, my colleagues, myself, um, is that, that purpose and, uh, um, you know, and, and just that delivery when you, uh, there was another time, uh, when I had the opportunity to tour a facility and I watched people using the capabilities that we were delivering and I was watching them use it in real time and, and that ability to walk the floor and say, Oh gosh, okay. I, I understand, you know, what I did back there, you know, okay, it looked like just a web interface to something, but I see how they're using it now and I can, you know, I have a far better appreciation for it. Now, technology is changing rapidly. There's new problems for tech leaders to solve, whether that's figuring out just how to motivate tech talent or of the newer generations or adapting to new technologies. What would you say are the top hiring challenges facing CTOs today? And where would you start with tackling some of these issues? I, when I when I read your question when I when I saw your question initially I was very much intrigued by this one because this is one that frankly I know myself and many other people you know wrestle with there's simply not enough talent out there um, you know to 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 get it done I think one of the things though that I I try to lean on is um, it, it's not as you know what p folks have done in the past is certainly important. Um, but actually getting the chance to sit down and talk to someone and, and hear where their passions lie. And, and if it lines up, you know, hopefully it lines up or, or in some way, shape or form with what we're trying to do in my mind, that trumps a certification or, you know, an educational background or something like that. Some of the best talent that I've ever worked with, they don't have a formal engineering degree. They don't have a, you know, formal certifications or, or whatever, um, but it's, it's that passion that they have for the job and, and finding that that's something that's, you know, near impossible to test for. That's, you know, how do you ferret that out is something that we, we, we wrestle with quite regularly. 
Now, obviously, perks and benefits are still one of the big deciding factors in a candidate's decision making. So what perks and benefits does DISA offer to, to that is attractive to future talent? Sure. So, um, you know, we DISA follows the, the federal uh, federal government's guidelines with respect to benefits and and that kind of thing. Um you know the, the the federal benefits in terms of retirement are are fairly generous. Uh, I came from the private sector before I came here, uh, so the the retirement benefits are are uh, pretty generous and and uh, and useful. Um, you know things like leave schedules and vacations and that work life balance. I talk to a lot of my friends that are in that private sector and. Um, you know, that, that work-life balance is super important to me, right? I, I'm, I'm, I'm at the, I'm at the backside of raising two young girls. Um, they'll, they'll be, they'll be moving, you know, hopefully moving out before long, but, um, but, uh, but, uh, you know, I'm in the, I'm in the latter half of that. And, and over the last, you know, 10 years that I've been here though, uh, that ability to have that work-life balance that, you know, when they have a function at school or I coach their softball team. Games or, you know, whatever was was hugely important to me, uh, and and it is probably one of the biggest attractions uh, in my mind that we have. Um, you know, the salary is what it is. You can go out on the internet and look it up and and decide if if that's worthwhile. You know, to whomever uh, is interested. But probably the lesser tangible things uh, is that work life balance and and you know some of the you know the retirement functions and and that kind of thing. I'd, I'd probably say that. Last question for you, Stephen. At Solvable, we're all about what drives purpose and meaning and satisfaction for people at work. So I'd love to know what drives purpose and meaning for you at this. It's it's seeing capabilities be fielded, right? Mm-hmm. It, it's seeing um, when 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 you put something out there and it's um, you know for a, for a while the the focus was in the department was very much we've got to secure the heck out of everything and that is super important the, that not not to take anything away from you know security and 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 those sorts of capabilities but often it came at the expense of um, usability and that user experience and so like now we're starting to focus more on that usability and and that user experience side and watching someone light up um, when something, you know, uh, works far better than what they had in the past, or they're able to accomplish something that they weren't able to accomplish before. Um, you know, like I mentioned before, seeing those soldiers in the airport, uh, I had the privilege a, a couple of weeks ago of, of getting out into the field to a number of the combatant commands and actually met, uh, a number of these, you know, uh, a number of soldiers, sailors, Marines, uh, airmen, um, across the board, um, and, uh, guardians, sorry, I don't want to forget our, our, uh, space force friends. Uh, but I had the, I had the privilege of meeting a lot of them. A lot of these kids are, are straight out of school and, and they're the ones that are on the front line and getting to get the feedback from them. Hey, do you know who DISA is? You know, what are your opinions? What are, and, and then that being able to bring that back here and then start to institute, uh, and look at capabilities that we can, uh, that we can deploy that would ultimately help them. That's what, drives us uh, on a daily basis and, and makes us all get out of work or get out of bed and, and come to work is is uh, is that mission. And I, I think that is unique uh, more than any place in the world. And, and it's, uh, it, it, it's what, you know, like I said, it's what gets me up every day. Stephen, thank you so much for being on with us today. And thank you all for listening to Architects of Contemporary Hiring.